has been coming in here. And now the Microsoft Data Bank tells us that at least one of this year's South Regional semifinalists has appeared in every Final Four since 1986. Duke, Syracuse, UCLA, Kentucky. Jim, you mentioned 31 and 4. Three of those were in Rupp Arena. We had one of them, which was uh, one that really hurts a UK fan when Louisville and Denny Crum went in there and beat them in uh, a very improbable upset victory. Two days after Christmas. Yeah. Highlight of the season for Louisville, without question. In many cases, for Louisville fans, the uh, highlight of the year. Yeah. <laughs> Shot again, altered by the defender. That was Turner, who is a terrific defender. Toby Bailey saying got hit on the arm, but I don't think so. Huh? Turner is just a tough guy to get by. Bailey now 0 for 9. <laughs> Turner set a new Kentucky record with eight steals this year against GW. He is quite a defender. There's Shepard. Look out for the dunk here. <laughs> Wait, he could jump? Just explodes. I, I don't know if I've ever seen Jeff Shepard play any better than he has in this stretch in the last three weeks. As I said, again, despite that ankle injury, it's just amazing how well he's playing, how confident he is with his jump shot. Bailey. He was pleading for a little closer inspection on some of these shots, and he got the whistle this time. Against McGlure, so he'll shoot two. Kentucky first for number 42, Jamal McGlure. Toby Bailey, his third, third time this season. Fifth. Third time in his career this season for the All Pac 10. And, and Jim, Toby you're Bailey, talking about Shepard. Let's think about Rick Patino. You know, he tells Shepard last year, you know, I don't know if there's going to be the quality playing time for you on last year's team. And yet, I really think you have an opportunity to advance your career after you get out of college. And so, Jeff. Sits down last year, red shirts, and here he is back, and certainly a, a, a great move by a coach being unselfish with his player, and, and uh, it's going to pay big dividends for him. Inside, Shepard, left the assist to Evans. Just too many players of too high a quality in this game. Kentucky over UCLA, over their storied names, and... They do have that UCLA jersey on. This team has been depleted to the point that it's a far cry from the club that it could have been at this point in time. Kobe, first from the floor. Really a Herculean effort to beat Michigan oh, absolutely. on Sunday. Absolutely. You know, they, they matched up, though, better with Michigan. Michigan, the team likes to play half score at a time. Another team with a deep bench. Evans showing inside post-up moves two times down the floor. Kentucky's hit its last seven from the field. Oh. And it's ahead to Edwards. Oh, he took his eye off of it. Johnson on the floor. He's been injured. Watson got hit. He's limping a little bit. Pizza Hut salutes the academic all-stars from UCLA Earl Watson. 3.0 GPA. Scott Padgett from Kentucky. 3.44 GPA majoring in social work. Scott Padgett's quite a story when you talk about academic achievement. All SEC academic. Right. Because his career was uh, put on hold early in the early stages because of yeah, just made work it. in the classroom. Wasn't right. Aggressive. Made a commitment to say, uh, you know, I can not only do it on the court, but was forced to do it on, you know, on the, uh, in the classroom as well as on the court. He wanted to play. Every Bailey got a piece of the hand. Not a bad system to have. You know, if you don't want to do it in the classroom, you, you don't get a chance to play. UCLA first and number 12, Toby Bailey. You can see it for the UCLA players and the walk and oh, yeah. frustration and the way they're playing. Without question. Can we mention that uh, Kentucky UCLA final in, in 1975? Joe B. Hall, basically those guys came back. Some of those same guys came back. There's Shepard with that coming off the screen. Tipped up. By, well, McClure went back down with it, but he'll head to the line for two. Go ahead. Joe B. Hall brought that team back, and in 78, the nucleus of that club with Roby, 
Givens and crew uh, were he able to go ahead and win a national championship. His third, the team's fourth. Phillips, remember they had yep. that combination. On the line, so, twin, 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 twin tower the combo. Yeah. Jeff Givens being the big guy, and who was it that Kentucky played in that national championship final? Duke. Duke University, a team that they'll be uh, facing on Sunday. Magic returns. Think about that. 20 years anniversary. 20 year anniversary of a Duke Kentucky national championship pairing. We'll meet in the regional final here. Remember, you Sunday. know, uh, I'm sure there's a guy that knows about that game better than uh, than I do. A guy broadcasting for CBS, Jim Spinarco, played in that game. Scored 21 points in the final, if I remember. Spinarco, thanks. Jaminski, Spinart. Yep. Bindler. Never returned to another Final Four, did uh, the Jaminski yeah. Banks group. Watson three-pointer on the run. I tell you, Reed's had a fine game tonight. McClure gets his fifth block. Bailey wanted the jump shot, just nothing there. They are back in it. Split the defenders. Reed. Yep, very active. Reed. Again. And Edwards out high. He's got Padgett behind him. Bounce pass over to the teammate. That's a fine catch by Padgett on the run. Tough bounce pass to grab. Well, the defending Reed champions, the team that beat Kentucky last year in the final, will take on Utah tomorrow. That's our first, our first ticket to the final four will, will be created out of the West Regional. That's at 340 tomorrow. Then at 6 o'clock, they'll tip North Carolina, Connecticut in Greensboro. Jim, kind of interesting. Connecticut, a team that likes to play a full court situation. North Carolina more adjusted to a half court. I think uh, Coda very important in that basketball game. How does he go up against that intense uh, pressure by Connecticut? Everybody's saying Connecticut's uh, year is next year, but I'm sure that uh, Jim Calhoun doesn't want to hear me talk like that. And not only that, this is the kind of year where you do get to, to the Final Four when no one expects yep. you to. You know, there have been years where they've had those expectations. And Connecticut has never been to a Final Four. Well, Jim Calhoun uh, almost had it. There's a out-of-bounds play by Duke University that cost him one. Patchett reached in on Bailey. In fact, Connecticut has made more appearances in the tournament without going to the Final Four than any school in the country. You mean the Final Four ever? Never been in yeah. the Final Four. They've been in the tournament now. I believe it's 27 times. <laughs> 12 minutes to go. As a resident of the state, are you making some kind of complaint? What's the deal? <laughs> Beautiful oh, pack. How's that? Well, JR over to Watson. McGlure wanted another block. I think that uh, it was probably a foul on Turner. They gave it to McClure. They did. His second. There's no quit in Watson in this ball game, however. Good pass by Henderson. Watson goes in. Tried to use the rim to ward off the defender. But he asked Watson, coming from Kansas City, did he by chance as a young kid go to the Final Four there at Kansas City in 1988? And he didn't, but it was uh, at that time when he loved the way that Danny Manning was playing at Kansas. He led up to the title. And ever since that time, Earl Watson's worn number 25. His tribute to Danny Manning. All Kentucky here tonight in St. Pete. That was a very big sequence for Rhode Island. He has a four-point spread. Going two one way, four the other way. Uh, you don't expect Bryce Drew with an open baseline to throw up an air ball. Well, every place he goes, it's always he's always double teamed. Excellent defense set up by Jim Harrick. Well, what Homer Drew talked about at halftime with Craig James, they've taken their offense and spread the floor. Here's Jason Jenkins for three. Oh, big time on, on Jenkins. He's not supposed to be that good from outside. 16 of 42 on the year. 
He is a face-up postman like the Lithuanian and Croatian Wilshinskis and Viskovic. Sykes, and it's a block down low as Jenkins was in position. Bob Jenkins picking up the foul. Jenkins was very uh, fortunate just to get called for a charge that time because Reynolds Dean is uh, an unbelievable athlete when he gets the ball facing the basket within 10 feet. What do you think about the, the judicious minutes usage with a team that lacks depth that, that Homer Drew is utilizing? He's uh, substituting with a team that's only eight deep as much as he can early. And he also tries to shotgun the fouls. But that's what a coach is, is for. He's supposed to shotgun the fouls, keep his guys rested, and have a pat hand for the last five minutes in prime time, in crunch time. Both coaches are doing exactly the same thing. Two, three zone. Arababu back on the floor, number 10. At the bottom of that zone, here's Joshua King. He hit the three to close the half. Misses that one. Valparaiso's fans beginning to feel it. If they hit one here, the Kiel Center will explode. Got to watch for Nunes. Nunes can bury from three-point land. He's had two great games in the tournament so far. Whoa! Got to get Mobley back in this ball game. He's their leader. He's their heart. Parazo, a 13 seed, trying to keep the Cinderella slipper alive in a game that should end at midnight Eastern time. As you look at our game summary, you call it uh, crunch time. Obviously, neither team has scored a field goal since the 12:03 mark. That's a four and a half minute span, and Rhode Island's last field goal came almost six minutes ago so it's about defensing and uh, and coaching from the bench and of course Jim Herrick Jr. on the sidelines with Valparaiso on Homer Drew's staff and you talk about the competitive nature of the business and uh, and the family uh, Jim Herrick Sr. and Jr. feeling it on both ends of the floor tonight. More families seem to be going into coaching the basketball they always say the apple doesn't fall far from the tree and that um, in the two three zone Vapo. Murphy, who's been effective in this game off the bench, can't find anything against that zone. Mobley is at the top, and he's been the one that's taken Homer Drew out of it more often times than not. This time, Wheeler. Between the two of them, a dynamic duo from downtown. That is his first three. He's one for seven. That is not good news for Valparaiso. Well, those two guys, I believe, got 47 points against the Jayhawks. And Mobley trying to pick the pocket of Bryce Drew. And uh, against this 2-3, this is great news for Jimmy Herrick. Mobley hits the wing. Wheeler buries it. Mark that down. It took him nearly 34 minutes to get a three to drain. Tyson Wheeler, 36% three-point shooter all year, threw up 236 of them coming into the night's game. Falpo might realize the clock's under nine. Drew. It was a three. 59-57. He has 15, and they've not been easy to come by. But it is the half-court grinder Valparaiso wanted. Murphy makes his move into the paint. Jim Harrick made a good move that time. He puts his three great athletes around the perimeter and goes one-on-one. -on -one. Bob Jenkins joins brother Bill with four. Vizkovic with four. And uh, Homer Drew, along with his staff, that includes uh, his son Dana Drew, Keeping up with the foul difficulty. Jim Harrick, when he wants discipline, he goes to the UCLA set, which is 1-2-2. Uh, two, two. When he wants one-on-one -on -one play, he goes to his three guards out, and they go one-on-one. -on -one. Antonio Reynolds 
Dean has had an outstanding defensive effort tonight, replaces Arababu. Murphy, by the way, the outstanding defender, quality student, a 3.0 GPA majoring in finance and information. Antonio Reynolds Dean cleaning up the offensive boards. He has a Baker's dozen. 13 for him. Rice threw off the ball. Running that curl to perfection, giving it back to Sykes. Nice kick out to Jenkins. Off the dribble, a leaner. Way too strong, but his brother cleans it up. Bob Jenkins, after the boulder thrown up by Bill, knocks home the offensive putback. They're a strong family on and off the court. Very religious and highly educated. Play with a ball fake on... Viskovic, he wants to take him if he can. Murphy will take him. Oh, a rainbow by Murphy. Again, that's Jim Harrick. Jim Harrick is calling those three guards one on one. Mobley's back on Drew, staying with him. Homer Drew really working over Leslie Jones. He felt Mobley got away with a hold off the ball against Rice. Viskovic, jump hook, not this time. Jenkins saves it to Valparaiso. Head up play by Jenkins that time. Couldn't get the ball back up. Here's the penetration to the middle with Murphy, one of the three guards. That was a rainbow. Viskovic hacked by Clay. That's his fourth. You have to have role players to make a run in the tournament, don't you? And uh, clearly for Valparaiso, their biggest players are their role players, Vizkovic and Boshinsky. Three things when you win a tournament and get into it deeply. Number one is your bench has to play beyond their fondest dreams. Uh, injuries got to stay away, and last shots got to go in. Foul difficulty, a bit of it for both, but certainly more severe for Valparaiso. Both Bill and Bob Jenkins with four, and Vilshinskis. Yeah, well, he is sitting right now as uh, Omar Drew's gone to the smaller lineup. But very important, every foul now that Valpo commits, it's a one-on-one. -on -one. We're down to crunch prime time with a three-point spread, and will dreams come true? Will the clock strike 12? Here's that isolation you were talking about. Yep. Now they'll get it to the next guard. Nope, he has it again with the rainbow jump. It didn't go down. Reynolds Dean again, fouled by Viskovic. Viskovic over his back. That's the fifth on my man. He goes to the bench. One less option. Oh, they're giving it to Jenkins. Oh, I thought it was on the man in the back. I'm wrong. Well, Excuse me. But it's still a fifth because Bob Jenkins also had four. I, you think about things relative to Homer Drew and matchups. Bob Jenkins, 43, having fouled out. The good news may be that Viskovic offers a different style. He really would rather lose Bob Jenkins than Viskovic at this stage because Bill Jenkins is a similar player. And Viskovic underneath can take the missed shot and put it back in, put putbacks in. There, I thought the foul was from the backside, but um, I did not have the angles that the refs have. Now Bob Jenkins leaves with 11 points, eight boards. But as we mentioned, uh, Homer Drew, particularly with that 2-3 zone, he needs Viskovic's presence out there. More so, more so than Jenkins. Yeah. You're absolutely right, sir. Antonio Reynolds-Dean at the line. Got to make the first to get the second. Old Balbo's hands are up. He may have been one of the... Oh, excuse me, it was a shooting foul. Oh, yes. It was uh, Reynolds Dean taking it to the hole and, and fouled. Reynolds Dean, one of the beneficiaries of the Herrick system, his numbers going up, comes up dry with both free throws. That last one wasn't even close. This place will explode, the Crusaders score. Explode! TNT, dynamite! Nunes is on the floor with Drew and Sykes. Viskovic 
and Bill Jenkins off the ball and intentional. Whistled against wow. Antonio Reynolds Dean. That's an intentional. That would be two shots and the ball out. Well, I would foul. An intentional foul. Oh, it's Mobley rather than Reynolds Dean. I thought they had whistled Antonio Reynolds Dean. It is Catino Mobley off the ball that's whistled. And that is his fourth. Sykes at the strike. Oh, nobody up there. You're shooting all by yourself. You're lonely. It's so difficult to shoot with no one lined up because all your life they were lined up on either side of the paint. This is the young man that said, I'm tired of Cinderella. He said, I'm tired of Cinderella. It insinuates we don't belong. Jimmy, you belong. And so do we. As CBS oh, oh. Sports coverage continues. By Henderson. Billy Knight, there he is. There it Knight is. follows up for two. Well, maybe Steve Lavin should have listened to Baron Davis earlier. Now let's check out the CBS Sports Line stat of the game. It's all about blocks. It's really dictated things early in this game. They had a slew of them in the first five minutes. Get all your tournament team sortable stats plus in-depth information and more at March Mayhem on cbs.sportsline.com. J.R. Henderson. Number three, Billy Knight on the line. Ashley Judd enjoying this Kentucky route. McGlure sits, but we also saw J.R. Henderson leave and exit as a Bruin. So all three seniors now on that bench. Blanking Aaron Davis, who never did get a chance to be in this ballgame. Bradley stolen away. Stolen away by Kevin Daly. Three. Oh, he's missed some chippies tonight. You know, he's a funny size player, Jim. You know, he, he's a wide body, but he plays so hard. Yep. He, he, he just gives a lot of effort out there. Very limited <laughs> quickness. Steven Massiello, number four in for Kentucky. I know the folks in Lexington want to see him in the scoring column. He took it right to the basket. Reset. Rhode Island with a couple of fouls to give the possession arrow to Valparaiso. We're 30 seconds away from midnight on the East Coast. Once it strikes, which Cinderella dance is on? Hey, stay with us, Boston, Philadelphia, New York, Miami. This is college basketball, NCAA at its best. Twice through. Trying to lob that one through, forced it a bit. Rhode Island claims the turnover. Difficult to throw that lob over Clay He's so quick off his feet. Starting backcourts have been a wash, Al. Sykes and Drew between them have 26. Mobley and Wheeler between them, 25. Uh, talk about college basketball being guard dominant. Tonight, further proof. A little more difficult this zone right now for those guards to drive. Wheeler should take them. Got it. Reynolds Dean counted in a foul. Reynolds Dean got inside the Give him a little rest and picked up uh, along the same lines. Rico Hines will shoot one more. You know, when he had that accident, Rico, with the knife the other night, he may have cut a nerve. There's going to be a little uh, more inspection on that finger when they get back to Los Angeles. As I said yesterday, Jim, watch him in practice. I mean, there was a lot of blood uh, on that uh, gauze pad that he's got. Matt, Knight, Knight goes out. Matt Harbour in. Sean Farnham's also in for UCLA. Todd Ramasert also seeing action. A minute left. 94-64. Boy, it's interesting, too, the players out on the floor, you see that this is not a deep bench for UCLA. All the more credit in practices, they didn't have a lot of quality guys to go up against. I think back to those John Wooden days when they had guys sitting on the bench that eventually became all NBA players. And a turnover belongs to Kentucky. 
So we're all set for a rematch of the national championship game from 20 years back. But what really people remember even more is 1992 in Philadelphia. And Christian Leitner, 104-103 overtime. Duke and Kentucky on Sunday. The last piece to the puzzle. Bradley was fouled. No ball was inside. He almost took his head off. Hogan, Hogan with his third basket attempt. No. Daly calls for the alley -oop. Hey! Home. Kevin Daly, transferred from the University of Nevada, there in Reno. Final seven seconds. Harbor wants to get in the column here. Daly slams it home. Four quick ones for Kevin Daly. Where's he been all night? 94-68. Thorough domination. But we have a great one coming here Sunday. Duke and Kentucky. We'll see you then. Now back to Greg Gumbel. All right, Jim. Meanwhile, in St. Louis, coming up on two and a half minutes to play, are we headed for another one of those endings? Rhode Island leads Valparaiso by four. Tim Brando, Al McGuire. Valparaiso has never led in the second half. They led by as many as eight in the first. They tied this game at 54. But Jim Herrick's club defensively doing the number and looking to Antonio Reynolds Dean to become the man that stops the interior play for Valparaiso. In many respects, they got here because of their offensive board work in the overtime against the Florida State. It's not been there for them tonight down low. Jim Harrick has never received the credit he should as a defensive coach because at UCLA there was so much up and down, but they were, they were even good at defense under him. Tonight, tonight, Jim Harrick's Rams have played outstanding D. Jared Nunes picks up his first foul. Valparaiso has lost already in this game. Bill Jenkins, Bob Jenkins still on the floor. Murphy gets the roll. But the foul difficulty is a factor the rest of the way. Viskovic, who's out there, does have four. Problem if Valpo loses, they just couldn't handle the three guards from Rhode Island. Still a two-possession game, but a very important sequence for the Crusaders here. There's double on Drew every time he touches the ball. Nunes, the third guard, rejected by Dean again. Too much hands on Wheeler that time. Boy, Wheeler gets whistled, and that is a bailout for Valparaiso. Watch Dean Sky on this block. He leaves this man, he's quick off his feet, gets a piece of it, then Wheeler fouls. That is the sixth. Now Valpo's in the one and one with 2.15 left. Viskovic has been effective with the ball, but it's through time now. Jenkins can't follow. They have been snuffed out defensively by Antonio Reynolds Dean. They'll muck the clock a little bit. He'll take it down to about 10 seconds. Valpo can't foul because it's one and one. And now's when the guards can really take over for you, both Wheeler and Mobley. You got no choice. You got to play man to man now. You can't play zone. Play working over Viskovic. Mobley an offensive board. Rejected by Viskovic. Good hands by Viskovic that time. They must score this time down. You need a score. All the way. Nunes. Boy, has he played behind before his fondest dreams the last three games. They could not get the timeout. That's Nunes. His first hoop. He's one out of six. It could not have come at a more opportune time. Still a lot of time left. The big thing now is you got to not let them score. You can let them take the 35 seconds, but don't let them score. Murphy wants to go one on one. It's too soon to go. I right back up a little bit, Murphy, first before you go. Uh, too much hands by Nunes. Murphy's just too quick. Homer Drew frustrated with that. So the clock had uh, been noted to the 11 mark before he committed the personal. Uh, Murphy, quick. With the ball, as you look at Homer Drew, what a marvelous storyline he has been. 
10 years at Valparaiso, and prior to the recruitment of his son, Bryce, he had a losing record, but the administration stayed with him. When he recruited his son, Tim, he went outside the house, came and rang the bell, knocked on the door, and came in and tried to recruit him <laughs> like he would recruit anyone else. That, that's unbelievable. That is why Janet told him he had to do it. He didn't want to recruit him. He thought Bryce should have been playing in a larger program. They need a hoop here. Jenkins from up high. Out of bounds to Rhode Island. That's the first ill-advised shot we've seen by Bill Jenkins tonight. 71-65. And a quick foul by Bryce Drew. As the years go by and accelerate by 10, 15, 20, 30 years from now, Falpo will still be talking this moment. Their moment on the stage. They milked it. They did good by it. They just didn't have enough power to do a triple upsets in a row. Antonio Reynolds Dean. Out of Atlanta, Georgia. He has uh, had a peach of a game tonight. Young man who was not close to his father. His mother remarried. He went by the name Antonio Reynolds, but once his father came back into his life, he he asked the sports information department to, to add the name Dean with a hyphen. They're much closer now, and uh, clearly on a team filled with great guards, he's been the answer on the low block. If he misses this one, it's two possessions. If he makes it, it's three possessions. It's two possessions. They're still in the ball game. There's 50 seconds left. Got to shoot from downtown. There it is. That's it. You got to put it up. Oh, they, they left him out. They had him double teamed and ran away from Bryce Drew. Yo, they got the first one. There's plenty of time left. Stay with us. Look at this. They suddenly run away on the ball fake. Give Bryce a chance. Mentioned at the top, one of those uh, few moments in sport when life imitates art. We may be seeing it tonight. You see the possession arrow to Valparaiso as we reset it for you. Rhode Island can go to its timeouts more often. And the double bonus for the Rams, but they just missed two. And you look at the three-point story, Valparaiso this half, it's kept them in it. And Bryce Drew's last three-point launch keeps you with us and how the rest of this way after midnight on the East Coast. Six, point, a six second spread, you can't let them hold the ball and weak it down. You gotta go out and foul them. You gotta or turn them over. You gotta foul them or turn them over. You can't let that's good play. Good play. Because you let them happen for 35 seconds, there's only six seconds left. Good play. This from a team that specializes in 2.5 seconds, triggering inbounds plays the length of the court. Well, if they can score the next time down, or get a foul shot, making a foul shot, then set up, maybe you can turn. But big shots here by Wheeler. He gets automatically two. They're in the bonus. Tyson Wheeler's dad hasn't missed more than five games in his career. Reggie Wheeler, very proud of his son, though he did miss the games last week. He's here tonight. Wheeler wasn't highly recruited. Whoop! Four-point spread. Go for two. Don't look for the three. Get any shot you can. You can't, you can't let the clock be too much time being eaten up here. Sykes trying to give it up to Viskovich. And Preston Murphy got in the way. 16.4 left on the clock as Bryce Drew prepares to trigger it in. Drew, the ball fake. This time the leaner only grazed the front iron and the quick foul. 9.3 remaining. Ever the optimist, Homer Drew. You consider what happened to Valparaiso in that first round win. Ansu Cisse of Ole Miss was at the line. Three opportunities to make a free throw, could not do it. Then on a loose ball, it was out of bounds to Valparaiso, and it came just after Drew had missed a three-point shot with five seconds left. Congratulations to Rhode Island. 
They got a solid ball club. Should have a terrific game come Sunday when they take on Stanford. Well, last weekend, uh, Jim, Jim Herrick said he had uh, three sons, two daughter-in-laws, three granddaughters on hand with uh, in his son, and it was a dream come true. Well, now his dream only seconds, precious seconds away from being extended to Sunday's matchup against Stanford. It is still a two-point, a two-possession game with 9.3 remaining. Think about it. A year ago, he was chasing interviews, Jim Herrick, at the Final Four. He was doing television. Now, after having one foot still in coaching and one foot out on our side of the business, he has an opportunity to take a team not only to an Elite Eight, but a Final Four. And he was probably one of the most criticized coaches in the profession. If you think back to Jimmy Valvano's miracle run, it began against his Pepperdine team well, well, in a three overtime. Well, over. years ago, he drove in a car and his wife with no money in his pockets out to California to get a high school job. And then the dream became a reality. He had seven, eight years at Pepperdine, then the miracle work at UCLA. And now to be able to come back this quick, unbelievable. Oh, through nearly back at home, but it's Antonio Reynolds-Dean taking it away, and Rhode Island is headed to the Elite Eight, one step from the Final Four in Jim Herrick's first year as head coach. his son, Jim Herrick Jr., that just embraced. Our Chevrolet players of the game, Bryce Drew, 18 points. Antonio Reynolds-Dean, he had three blocks to go along with a double-double, six of eight from the floor, and an enforcer on the defensive end. There you see the tickets punched just a step away from San Antonio, the Stanford Cardinal for the first time in the Elite Eight. Rhode Island, the same opportunity. For Al McGuire, for Craig James, Tim Brando saying so long. As we mentioned at the top, it's great in the NCAA tournament when you have stars that are appreciative. Homer Drew was, as is Jim Herrick, Greg Gumbel, and our crew in the studio after this break. The musical group, No Doubt, that's coming up next here on CBS. Final score from the Keel Center in St. Louis, Rhode Island, 74, Valparaiso, 68. Al McGuire standing by live with both coaches, Jim Herrick of Rhode Island and Homer Drew well, we Valparaiso. We congratulate both coaches, Jim and, and Homer. And Homer, it's time to cry. I, you know, I thought about when you won the national championship, I had a little tear when the time was running down. and. I was really sad for our kids, but very happy for Jim. He did a marvelous job with his team, and his team was really well prepared and, and outplayed us and deserved to win tonight. You know, Jim, congratulations. I thought your defense was outstanding, and even though, and also you beat your son. Yeah, uh, he. Uh, that's a hard emotional game. I, I just have mixed emotions, but I'm glad we won. I thought we defended him really well. It was more our offensive impatience that hurt us more than anything, but I didn't know what this guy was doing. He, he really had us confused, and his kids played their guts out. It was a great college basketball game. What, in your advice, would you advise now for Homer to do? Retire. <laughs> <laughs> Be Bryce's agent. <laughs> uh, do you think your son will go on to Pro Bowl? Well, it's been his dream, Al, and, and I would love to see if God would give him that chance to play at the next level. He's worked very hard for that attempt to do such. Okay. And what do you think? Anything dreams of Stanford yet, or is it too soon, Jim? Oh, it's too soon. I'm going to enjoy it for another hour, and then we'll go watch them. I know them. We've played them. Homer played them. Uh, they're big, and boy, I tell you, they're good. They're right. good. Thank you, guys. Congratulations to both of you, and good night, Greg. <laughs> good night coach <laughs> you know you know jim herrick says he's not looking that far ahead but it's always in the back of a coach's mind isn't it i think so i know coach herrick is immediately the wheels are turning he did they did play stanford early he played them at mike montgomery when he was coaching ucla so he's what they have him well scouted and they played them well too lost to them by 1.70 to 69 what do you think they're going to do against that big front line well i think the front line is the key and we talked about it at the top of our show tonight 
night that we thought the difference might be what the front line for Rhode Island did in tonight's game. Clearly, Reynolds Dean stepped up in a large way, as did Luther Clay in the first half. So I think they've got to have that same kind of front line play to have a chance against a big Stanford team. All right, we have more coaches in view. Steve uh, or Steve Lavin of UCLA and Tubby Smith of Kentucky. We'll hear from both of them on the heels of their game that took place in St. Petersburg tonight. We'll get to that as we continue on the road to the Final Four in a moment. you to join us tomorrow for a big day of college basketball action. It all begins at 1230 Eastern time with the Division II National Championship game between Kentucky Wesleyan and UC Davis. Then at 3 o'clock Eastern time, it is the road to the Final Four show as we break down the regional brackets for you. And then at 340 Eastern time, the West Regional Final tips off between Utah and top seed Arizona in the West. And then at 6 o'clock, it's number one University of North Carolina playing in its home state against number two Connecticut. That's tomorrow on CBS. In case you forgot how UConn got this far, here's what happened last night. Ten seconds remaining. Bellamine off the boss goal. He was blessed. The shot wouldn't drop. Still amazes you to watch that shot, and I'm sure it still hurts Bob Bender, the head coach of the Washington Huskies. UConn moves on, Washington goes home. Now, earlier this evening, Kentucky's Wildcats, 94 68 winners over the UCLA Bruins in the South. Kentucky cheerleaders at work, Kentucky all over the Bruins here. Junior Wayne Turner taking the feed, driving to the hoop, gets the runner to fall, and off the fast break. Turner, long outlet to senior Allen Edwards. Throw down, young fella. The Wildcats senior Jeff Shepard will get into the action. Watch him come up with a steal. And he'll take it all the way in for the dunk. Kentucky rolled 94 to 68. The final score, boy, Kentucky has rolled to victory by 15, 27, and 26 points. And just a short while ago, Michelle Tafoya caught up with Kentucky coach Tubby Smith. Coach, congratulations. How is this team managing to put together one dominating performance after another? Well, we're, you know, we're getting some good looks at the basket. I thought our, our defense has been the key all year long, and our rebounding, we were able to dominate a depleted UCLA team without uh, Baron Davis, and you know they've had some problems this year, so they looked a little bit winded tonight, and um, and we've got a very deep bench, and I think that's been the key to our success all year long. Next up is Duke with the Final Four at stake, obviously reminiscent of 1992. Your first thoughts on that game? Well. On the 94 game or the game coming up? No, the game coming up. Okay, well, it's um, certainly we're looking forward to playing a great um, team. You know, Duke is always, Mike Krzyzewski is one of the best coaches in the country, if not the best. And um, certainly it's a real honor and a privilege for me to get an opportunity to coach against such a, a great coach and a, and a great program. So we're, we're looking forward to it. Congratulations, Coach. Thank you. Tubby considers it an honor and a privilege. He's not doing a bad job. The Kentucky Wildcats, I know I'm the rookie in here. I'm trying to convince you guys. I'm Kentucky is playing the best basketball in this tournament, Coach. Well, I would say there's a number of playing good basketball, but their spreads are bigger. But I know tomorrow it would be tough uh, for Kentucky, and I think it could be the best game. And we've been sitting here trying to figure out which UCLA team is going to show up. Boy, they just barely get by Miami last week, and then they're on a high against Michigan. You didn't know how they'd come out tonight. Well, without Baron Davis, you knew they were shorthanded. And with Kentucky's depth, defense, confidence, and explosive ability offensively, I mean, they're, they're on a roll right now to where, I, I agree with you, Greg, they're playing as well as anybody in the tournament right okay, now. Okay, it's been a strange season indeed for UCLA. We'll take a timeout. When we come back, we will hear from UCLA head coach Steve Lavin as we continue on the road to the Final Four. Welcome back, everyone. As we've been telling you, the Kentucky Wildcats catch rampaging in the tournament. 94 to 68 winners over the UCLA Bruins this evening. Just a short while ago, Michelle Tafoya caught up with UCLA head coach Steve Levin. Coach, it's been a season of overcoming obstacles for this team. Tonight, you ran into an insurmountable obstacle in Kentucky. Yeah, well, they're a tremendous team, and uh, 
hats off to them in terms of the way they played. Uh, but I just told our seniors they got nothing to apologize for. 103 wins over their career, three Pac-10 titles, an Elite Eight, a national championship, and now a Sweet 16 to add to their resume. And uh, It's not that we're into moral victories. It's just they've done a lot in their career, and I'm proud of them as seniors the way they went out. And We would have liked to have moved on here in the tournament, but uh, we had a heck of a season when you consider all the injuries and suspensions and reinstatements and the other tough hurdles and obstacles that you mentioned. A real tough way, especially for guys like all three of the seniors, but Toby Bailey in particular was really handcuffed in the first half. Yeah, I mean, Kentucky really played a flawless game. You look at the statistics, they were great in their pressure. They out-rebounded us. Uh, uh, they just dominate every phase of the game, and Tubby Smith is a tremendous coach, and again, it's hats off to them. They just had an amazing year, and when you win 30-plus games at Division One level uh, with all the parities we've seen in this tournament, that means you're doing something pretty sound, and they're experienced, and again, I love our players, and uh, they told them they got to hold their head high, and it's tough on them. They're a competitive group, and they want to win every game, as we all do, but uh, they've done a lot in their career, and 20 years from now, they'll understand and appreciate better than they do right now what they've accomplished coach thanks for taking the time okay thank you so ucla falls to the kentucky wildcats the wildcats advanced to meet duke earlier this evening the blue devils 80 to 67 winners over the orange men of syracuse and the syracuse cheerleaders uh had a little cheer early on the orange battled back battle back from 10 down here ryan blackwell on the line he doesn't get it to go but of china with the follow-up, and it was tied at 49 right there. Then Syracuse on a 9-0 run. Here comes Duke. And Duke steps in, takes the charge there. Trajan Langdon holding his ground, and that helped the Blue Devils make a run. Duke freshman William Avery drives Elton Brand down low for the stuff. Head coach Mike Krzyzewski talked about his freshman taking control. 11.50 timeout when it was a tie score. I thought William Avery and... And this guy, Elton Brand, just took the game over. We, we, we didn't know how to score against that zone, and all of a sudden, William penetrated, got the ball to Elton, and then Avery, to me, was the key player for us in that second half. Now, Duke and Kentucky will meet on Sunday. When's the last time they met? Glad you asked. 1992 regional final in Philadelphia. Two seconds remaining in overtime. Kentucky led 103 to 102. You know, one of the things I've seen Duke do in the past in situations like this is try for the quick pass to half court and call a quick timeout so they can get in better shooting range. There's the pass to Leitner. Puts it up. Yes! Everyone remembers that shot by Christian Leitner. Not as many remember that that capped a 10 for 10 performance shooting from the field. He was also 10 for 10 from the free throw line. Do you think any of the teams will be watching that clip between now and Sunday? <laughs> well, he was returning player of the year, too, at the time. But really, they could go by comparative scores. UCLA, they're both about even. Clark. Kentucky's going to continue to try to play the way they've played throughout the tournament. Just keep on keeping on is their motto. Duke, on the other hand, I think has to bring their game up another notch to deal with a very strong Kentucky team. All right, guys, we'll take a timeout. When we come back, we will take a look at the brackets as we head into two more days of tournament time here on CBS. Coming up next, for most of you, it's your late local news. That is followed by The Late Show with David Letterman. Here's how the brackets stand as we speak. First, we'll begin in the Midwest, in St. Louis, Rhode Island, and Stanford. That game will tip at 2.40 p.m. on Sunday, Clark. When these teams met during the regular season, Cat Mobley went for 30. I think he has to be controlled, but Stanford also has to deal with the interior quickness of, of Reynolds Dean and also um, Luther Clay. In that previous game, Stanford won by one. Duke and Kentucky will tip at 5 p.m. on Sunday, Coach. Long time since 1992, and it should be a, another close one. All right, that one will be in St. Petersburg. Meanwhile, Saturday action in Anaheim, West Regional, Arizona, and Utah will tip at 3.40 p.m. Saturday, Clark. Arizona is a team that's dominant with their defensive pressure. That's how they win games. Utah has to be at the very top 
of every aspect of their game to advance. And coach, you're probably not aware of this, but North Carolina is going to play on uh, Saturday at 6 p.m. Eastern time. They're going to meet UConn. And Connecticut didn't have Hamilton, their best scorer, that first half. So they get the full people there. And El Amin had some game. Yeah, he did. All right. It's about time for us to get out of here because we are back here in less than 12 hours, 12.30 p.m. Eastern time Saturday with the Division II Championship. Until then, for Coach Dean Smith and Clark Kellogg and for all of us here at CBS Sports, I'm Greg Gumbel. Thanks for joining us. We'll see you then.